Hi, it's Richard here. It's a beautiful day here in Montreal and I'm putting the finishing touches to my hall table. This is a curved, um, a sort of triangular table with curved sides. Uh, this is Kingwood veneer round the apron uh, with a solid walnut cot bead, solid walnut uh, legs and a veneered uh, top in redwood burl with a solid walnut edge banding. And uh, one of the last things I've got to do before I attach the top to the table itself is to clean up the, um, the edge banding. So here is the top. It's a half inch piece of MDF uh, which is veneered on the top with this beautiful redwood burl. It's quite a fragile, quite an expensive veneer. And on the bottom to ensure the uh, stability of the, of the top so that it doesn't warp because you've only applied glue to one side I actually had this la leftover lacewood veneer. And then what I did, I ripped using my track saw some very thin pieces of walnut. And um, because the curves are quite gentle, I was able to just bend them into place. And I used this blue tape to uh, essentially hold them in place, a bit like clamps. So because I was a little nervous about how this would hold, I used for the first time ever this tight bond liquid hide wood glue which is reversible um, and, it, and it's worked very well. I've already, I did uh, the, the edge banding in three sections and this is the final section here. So I did the first section, it's held up really well, nice tight uh, glue joint and secondly here and the third piece is left over is this section here. So I'm just about to remove the tape, I did it yesterday morning. So we're 24 hours later, which is more than enough. If it's, um, you know, if it's not done by now, it never will be. So I'm just going to remove the tape and uh, then examine the, um, the joint to see if there are any gaps or areas where I didn't have it clamped up properly. This blue tape actually provides quite a lot of clamping pressure if you, if you hold it really tight when you're pushing it down. And I've got a very nice... Um, glue joint here. So the main purpose of this video is to show how I'm going to level this edge banding to make it flush with the tabletop with the veneer surface here. Um, one method would be to use a router with a flush trim bit. Uh, in, for me that, that's, that's something that I would never do. Um, to, to bring a power tool at this stage uh, of the project of the build uh, to a fine piece of furniture like this is asking for trouble, one slip and the whole thing could really be ruined. Uh, so I don't like to do that, I like to use hand tools. Another, another method would be to use um, a block plane and to gradually smooth it down until you, until you feel it's flush. Uh, that's, that's also a very good method. You could get close with a block plane and then use a chisel to you could use a chisel to uh, cut this away. So my preferred method is to use a spoke shave. The nice thing about a spoke shave it works a bit like a, an altimeter in an aeroplane. You've got a nice big surface, um, a big distance here to ensure that you're keeping uh, the the tool in whatever plane, um, in, in whatever plane you want to keep it. So if I want to keep it dead flat, I can see by looking at these wings here, these handles, that I am flat. If I want to angle it this way, it's exaggerated because of its length. Now the nice thing about uh, spoke shaves, and this is the Veritas spoke shave, which also has a couple of shims which you can place in between the blade and this surface here and allow you to close the mouth of the uh, Plane. It's actually quite useful, but I'm not going to use it in this instance. The nice thing about this spoke shave, and spoke shaves in general, is it has two thumb wheels here, which allow you to alter how much blade is exposed across the, uh, across the width of the sole. So if I put this on, and put the lever cap here, just tighten this up. So, um, what I can do is by altering these thumb wheels, I can make 
one side of the blade protrude more than the other side. So when I'm working this edge and I'm a long way from my final, uh, final um, distance, I can take a lot off. But as I get close, I can use the less protruding side of the blade and take very, very uh, progressively finer cuts. So a lot off this side, very little off this side. Okay. So you set the blade like usual, looking onto uh, you know a, pe a white background um, until you can see the blade. Then back it off, and then make sure the four the thumb wheels are engaged. And I use a, a little domino here to. There, I'm taking a little bit off there, so I'll bring it forward a touch more, a bit more on this side. And I think you can see, let me see if I can zoom the camera in, and I think you can see, if I do this, I'm taking more and then less over here, maybe a little too little there. Okay, so that's how I want this set. And in this particular case, so I'm going to be working uh, this edge from the back here to here. So I like to have this off the workbench so it's not interfering with my hand if I want to go down the edge and so on. And I found the best way to secure this is to put a dog here, like that, and then to use a hold fast over here into the bow there and that's pretty good that's going to stop it's going to still swivel a little bit but it's going to stop it moving um, any further so here we go I'm feel, I've got about uh, I would say about three millimeters uh, maybe an eighth of an inch to remove across the length here so pretty, pretty impressive using the, the side of the blade over here to get me down. Nice sharp blade. And you can hear when you start to get closer actually because the, the wood is, um, the tone is changing. It's vibrating less because you're further away from the surface. Um, I want to be careful when I get to the edge here that I don't cause this to splinter off. So I want to take very little cuts here. And then again here. Okay, let me see if I can zoom in a bit. getting quite close now, maybe about half a millimeter. So I'm starting to use the center of the blade, which is a finer cut. Thicker here, so I can go back to the, the left side here. And there's a little bit of glue squeeze out um, right on the edge. So when I know when I'm taking that glue squeeze out, that's maybe a thousandth or two thousandths of an inch, I know when I'm taking that away, down there. And what some people will do is run a little pencil, maybe a white pencil, down here. And when they take that pencil away, um, they know they're there as well. As I get close, I'm also going to angle the blade a little bit uh, so that I'm taking more material off the side here than over here. And to be honest, in just a couple of minutes, very quick work, very easy, very safe, very quiet, quite relaxing. I'm I'm done. Um, and uh, you know, you might be still setting up a router at this point. Um, going to use the, the fine side of the blade just to move the mouse over. Now this is the 
only spoke shape that I have. I remember Gary Pat told me he had 19, he showed me 19 of his spoke shapes. And at the time I thought, my gosh, you know, what you can do with so many, but it really is a tremendous tool. And it's not a tool that people tend to buy right at the start of their hobby, their woodwork hobby, that, you know, they go for the smoothing plane, the jointer planes and so on. And then it's the sort of second line. But I, I would say that um, for any sort of curved work, uh, for fine work like this, spoke shape is absolutely essential. I love using my spoke shape. Now here, I've got to be very careful because I can split off this corner. that's done. Now what I'm going to do is clamp this in the vise and I'm going to do the, the sides here and I'll, I'll also use my spoke shape for that. So thanks for watching and I hope you uh, found the video useful. So just as a coder, um, I'm going to show you how to use a, how to do a very fine cut with the spoke shape. Here I've got the blade level across the sole and I'm using the thin shim uh, to, to close the mouth slightly. And I've got the blade set for a very fine cut here. Um, the first thing to do is remove any sort of glue residue here. And what, you, what does happen, the, the mouth does tend to clog. Because um, I'm not taking sufficiently big shavings to sort of come all the way over. And that's one of the, that's one of the issues. I've got some... Uh, saw marks here, which I want to get rid of. But it does leave a very nice surface. Um, I hope the camera can pick that up. So yeah, that's the Veritas spoke shave. Fantastic tool. I looked at the Lee Nielsen uh, spoke shaves as well at the time and I tried them out, um, but I'm very happy with this. Uh, it's one of my favourites. So, yep. Thanks for watching.